Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 10th of March, 2014, and this is episode 69, Knitting Winter Away. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. This week we went to the aquarium. At Mara's request, she wants to see the fishes. She loves the fish. And we go probably twice a month because we have annual passes, and we met another Mara. She was my age, and I think we kind of freaked her out because I don't hold my kids' hands when we go to the aquarium. They know that they're just supposed to stand next to me because I can't hold their hand all the time when we go shopping or whatever. My hands are full. They know that they need to stand next to me. So most of the time, Mara is really good at that, but sometimes she forgets that we have to wait our turn and that mom can't fit into all the small spaces that Mara can. So we got to a tunnel and some people were standing looking at shark rays and I couldn't get around them, but I didn't expect them to stand there forever. So we just stood and waited for a moment and then Mara darted in between these two ladies. And I was like, Mara, you can't just run off. And this other Mara turned around and looked at me and she was like, and then she saw me grabbing my Mara's shoulder. And she was like, oh, my name's Mara too. So we had a conversation about how that's not a very common name. That was fun. But you don't come here to hear about the aquarium. You come here to hear about knitting. So the Knitty Knit Along is still going on. You can use any pattern from Knitty, which is a free online magazine. And I'm doing the Skew Socks by Louise Robert. And um, this is still my first one. So this is why I'm still just on the first one. Logically, this is Intarsia in the Round. And logically, I know that there are pearl back rows. I knew that before I started. But I was in denial or something. So every other round is purling the whole way around. Which isn't bad. I just happen to be working on several projects that have purling as every other row. So this got set aside. I was here last week so I did double the size of the sock but since these are going to be socks for me it's not very it's not very much. I'm using Nooch Fiber Midtown sock in Stomping Grapes and totally goth. So after I get, um, I finished one of the, the projects that had pearl bag rows. After I finish the second one, these should be much easier because I won't have all those pearl bag rows in my life. This knit along goes through the end of the month and the prizes are the winner's choice of a pattern up to $7 on Ravelry or I will knit you something from my stash, which, uh, whoop, yeah, we're there which the winner and I will discuss if they choose that option, which yarn they would like, because not all of my yarns are available. Um, some of them are already assigned to things, but a lot of the yarns are available. One of the objects that I finished that had pearl back rows is this. This is the Austin Ashton Chalette, excuse me, Ashton Chalette by D. O'Keefe. Obviously, it'll be in show notes because everything is, and um, mm, it smells really good. This is in the blue steel colorway of Leading Men Fiber Arts. Sorry, there was a cookie emergency. Uh, I think I was telling you that this is Leading Men Fiber Arts in the showcase base, colorway blue steel. And uh, let's see, where's the stitch marker? It's so worked top down, so from here to here. It's what I finished in the last week. It's all blocked. I still really recommend this pattern for first time lace knitters and first time chart readers. It has really simple charts for the first two charts are really simple. Simple enough that you could do them while reading but probably not while watching a movie with your children climbing on you. And then the third and fourth charts are still pretty simple still easy reading. Again, not for when your children are climbing on you. Um, 
And there's, like I said, there's rust rows. So pearl back rows and the instructions instructions are really, really clear. There are instructions on how to make the shawl bigger if you want. I made mine two pattern. And it's just really pretty. It's very lovely. Love the um the motifs. They look great. The other project I finished this week is a pair of socks. These are it's Blizzard Ho for me, which is the sock pattern I designed for the 716 knit Daria Club. And um, here we go. I used two yarns striping every other round, which is why it looks as variegated as it does. And I think you can see it pretty well. I don't know why I'm lifting this like you can see the bottom like this. Um, I think it's showing up pretty well, the striping. I used Red Heart Shimmer in purple, which I also used for the toe, heel, and cuff. And I used 716 Knit 716 Sock in the Poo Poo Southern California Poo Poo colorway for the other stripe. This is where I was on both socks last week. So I finished the legs, finished the cuff, um, and entered them in the knit along in the thread over there in the 716 Knit group, which... Um, the rules for that knit along are that you have to use one of the patterns from the club or all of the patterns. You can knit as many as you want, but it has to be a pattern from the club. And um, I think there are bonus points if you use Jenna's yarn, but I don't remember for sure. So my pair for right now are done. I'm going to um, probably going to start another pair of the same pattern soon for my best friend because she when I went to Michigan she saw my socks I was wearing the the prototype that I had knit for myself the knee highs and she was like oh, I love those so I'm probably going to knit those for her soon I don't know if it's just because it's my pattern that I don't mind knitting it several times or if it's just a good pattern you'd have to ask someone else who knit it because I might be a little biased but I really enjoy the knit I knit those on US size 1 2.25 millimeters and as soon as I, that's not true. I was going to say as soon as I finished those, I cast on a new pair of socks, but that's not true. I started casting these on last night and cast the, finished casting them on this morning. So there's the cast on and the first round of these socks, which will grow up to be the Gothic Spire by Cookie A. I'm using Leading Men Fiber Arts in the Showstopper base, which is Gothic Queen, the colorway. And I'm using US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles to make these. So next week, these should be much more impressive. I kind of feel silly just showing you just the cast on of things. But then again, it's still my knitting time. I still had to cast those on. That takes a little bit of time. I used the, um, the crocheted cast on. I really, really like the edge that it leaves. I like it better than pretty much all of the other cast-ons that I've used. I also worked on another pair of socks. These are the Socks on a Plane, patterned by Laura Linneman. Um, I kind of made a mistake design feature, whatever you want to call it. So my cables are mirrored in the pattern. They're not. They're just the same cable on either sock. And this yarn is Peyton's Croy stripes in the Sailor Stripes colorway. I really like how it's working up and I'm glad that I matched at the toes. Also worked on US 1 2.25 millimeters. The work in progress, those, the, um, the socks on a plane, those were my walking around the aquarium project because it's really, really simple. It's mostly stocking out with just that cable section. And with stitch markers marking either side of the cable section, I could just go and not really pay attention. Also why I don't hold Mara's hand when we're in the aquarium, because then I couldn't knit. But she's she's pretty well trained. She doesn't usually dart off. And this project was easy enough that I could just uh, stop holding it if I needed to. Because I have it in this bag that I got um, ever ago 
from my friend Mary Lee. She gave it to me. It had some yarn and a pattern for some mitts. It's perfect for walking around in the aquarium or zoo or wherever you may be walking around. I really like little bags with a handle that you can just hold on your wrist and walk in it at the same time. Not just that style of bag, but bags that are made for that for walking and knitting. Love them. Okay, this is this is what got I would say a big chunk of my knitting love this week. This is the sweater, one of the two children's sweaters that I'll be making uh, starting, you know, last month until they're both done. This is, let's see, the stitch marker is over here. So it's a bottom up sweater. This is what I had last week. So I did all this body and I did the sleeves. And the sleeves are already crafted underneath uh, because I had them on stitch holders and that was really annoying so I crafted them pretty much immediately and this is why this is why I'm knitting winter away you see because I finally started working on the sweater and it's almost done and now it's springtime. Today is warm enough that after I finish recording, I'm going to open the window. It's not like 70s or anything, but I think it's supposed to be 60s the next two days. Tomorrow it's supposed to be almost 70. It's supposed to be like 69. It's ridiculously warm. And then it's supposed to drop down at the end of the week. So maybe a child will wear the sweater before it gets put away for the season, but who knows. Anyway, yeah, so that's why winter is getting knit away. Um, this pattern is the Gramps Cardigan by Kate Oates, and it's got cables on the arms, and it's got cables on the front. There's also a collar, so I'm not worried about how it's curling in front because that'll be fixed later, but um, it doesn't curl this much when I'm knitting it, just when I'm showing you. It's like, no, wait until the big reveal. I'm using Knit Picks Swish DK in Rainforest Heather. I had Gabriel try this on yesterday, as soon as I attached the sleeves, and it fits just about perfectly right now, like length and arms, arm length and everything. So uh, he'll probably wear it the rest of spring, and then it will go in Mara's closet, because I'm sure he'll have outgrown it by next winter, but that's fine, because I'm making him that orange sweater, and that's what he really, really wants. I showed him the pattern that I picked out. And he was like, oh, are you going to make it right now? And I was like, no, I'm not going to make it right now. I'm making this other sweater. And he was like, oh, okay, mom. He gave me the duck face of displeasure. That face, that's the displeasure face. I did some spinning on this. I did a lot of spinning on this. This is the bruised colorway by Stitch Punk New Zealand Knitter. And, um, it's merino, 100%. I am actually to the point where I need to wind this off because my spindle is getting just a little bit heavy. So I'm going to wind it off and let it rest overnight and then probably start plying what I have spun up immediately and um, obviously can continue spinning the single. So that's really exciting. And I can't wait for that yarn to be finished. Hopefully by the end of the month, that's what I'm shooting for. I worked on the log cabin blanket that I'm making to match with our couch, and it actually looks really nice on the couch. I know this because we watched some movies this week. We um, we marathoned the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and we have Two Towers and Return of the King on the extended special edition. So there was, um, there was a lot of time. I didn't work on just this. This was one of the many projects that I worked on. The, the way that I'm working on this log cabin blanket, which is on a circular, so it's kind of curling on itself, the way I'm working on it is I'm not just working on it because it's garter stitch and I would want to shoot myself, but um, I make a list every day based off of the bullet journal system. Um, I make a list every day of what I want to accomplish and then, you know, fill in throughout the day if there's anything important that happens, events or whatever. Um, but every time I cross off something on my list that I want to finish, I 
do a set portion of this. When it was the smaller section right here, I did an entire, I did two rows, so an entire garter ridge. And now that I'm to this bigger section, I do one row when I finish something, which means it's not going to grow super fast, but it is going to grow. It's not just going to sit there and not be worked on. I'm using Karen Simply Soft. This is Heather Gray. This is Dark Sage, this brown color, and this the brown. This green color is Dark Sage, and this brown is Chocolate. And I have two other colors that will be added into it when I get there, but I'll tell you about them when I get there. The Greek Fire Knit Along is going on, which is a design by Josh Riggs, the Sword of a Knitter. And I was a test knitter, so I won't be showing you an actual knitted project each week, but I will be showing you what my test knit looks like. And I forgot last week, so I'm actually going to show you clue one and clue two of the test knit. I used Nooch Fiber uh, Midtown Sock in Murky 2 and Flow and Madeline Tosh sock in window pane uh, on US size 5, which I don't remember what the millimeters are. But those are my two clues. So what do yours look like? I would love to see. I do scroll through the spoiler thread occasionally, but not a lot. So what does yours look like? So sock yarn blanket. I did, I think I did eight squares this week. I, oh, big announcement, big moment for my sock yarn blanket. I'm at 500 squares, exactly, on this blanket. So that's 64%. That's pretty good. And this week, I did the square, which is a bunch of small scraps from my friend Becca. And this is the last of the Becca yarn. Not the last of what I have, but the last of this rotation of the Becca yarn. So this is Newt Fiber... Morningside Sock in Princess. This is Cloud Lover Sock in Poison Apple. This is the Peyton's Stripe in Sailor Stripes. It's, a, it's what I pulled out from the inside to make the stripes match. And then all the other squares are on the other side of the blanket. Okay. So this is Haley Yarn. These squares are all Haley yarn. So yeah, sack yarn blanket is growing. It will be done by the end of the year. It will be done by the end of the year. Steve has Steve has tried to steal it recently. I laid it out on my bed. I think I told you this last week or the week before. So I laid it out on my bed and he was like, oh, you're making a blanket for me. And I was like, huh, uh, you're funny. Mara also thinks it's a blanket for her. And yesterday, Gabriel informed me that I was making him a very lovely blanket. So everybody wants this blanket, but it is my blanket for me. So Hexapuffs, I did nine of them this week. When I finished the It's Blizzard Ho For Me socks for my sister, I did one where I striped the yarns just like I did in her sock. And then I used the purple sparkly to make another Hex the Puff. Those are the two that I did that day. And then when I finished the blue steel shawl, the Ashton shawlette, I used these two yarns, which I which were from Jenna's Dragon, to make this Hex the Puff that has um, slip stitch detail. I don't know. I just wanted to play around with it. It's a little bit... I think I could get it so it would be a little more centered but it was fun to play with. So that's my, those are my celebratory hexapuffs. I told you last week, maybe, that um, when I finish a project, now I've decided I'm going to do a celebratory hexapuff and a celebratory blanket square. So that these projects get done, you know, a little more quickly. One square and one hexapuff in the grand scheme of things doesn't make a big difference, but when it's one additional every time I finish something, that adds up pretty quickly. So the other, I have 
this square, which is the Becca yarn, which I was using last week. Oh, I didn't put that tail in. Hmm. Um, that's the last of this colorway of yarn from Becca. No, that's not true. There's a little, a little scrap left over. Um, by this, I don't mean like a tail. I mean like a mini skein. So it's really, really small. And then the rest of the squares are with yarn from Haley because um, she was like, you're ridiculous. You can use the sock yarn leftovers for whatever you want. You know, so I'm using the ones that she sent for Hexapuffs as well as blanket squares. So when I make a blanket, when I pull out a ball of yarn, I make that blanket square and that Hexapuff for the day out of that one ball. So here's one. I really, really like this one. I don't know what it is, but it looks like fire. And that's pretty cool. I had a lot of this color, this colorway, and these squares look super different. So I was like, I'm just going to make two out of that right now. This I made on Fat Tuesday. I thought it was appropriate. And then this is the one I made last. So those are my hexapuffs. They're growing. Did I tell you that I was up to 62 total? And I have been keeping up with the, um, the sewing together a little bit every week. So that's good. Um, Next to my, yes, over here next to my owl, there's a bag that holds the put together portions. And up here, no, this way, right there, that's where I have the hexapuffs that are still hanging out loose, which it, obviously that jar is still pretty full because I'm only making myself put together three, um, three lengths of string worth a week. But I'm not attaching them all together, so it's little, basically like little pods that I'm putting together instead of, you know, attaching one hexapuff to the bigger thing. It's multiple hexapuffs together, and then I'll figure out how I'm going to put together those bigger pods later, probably once that bag starts looking kind of full. I got new things this week. Very, very excited about both of them. I was on a team for the Winter Games, and we all donated prizes, the team members did, so that um, it turns out that some people got two prizes. I am one of, the people, one of the people who got two prizes, because everybody who finished got a prize, and then we had enough prizes donated that everybody who finished more than one project got a second prize. So my first prize came this week, I'm super excited about this. This is Gnome Acres. Oh, I've wanted to try Gnome Acres yard for yarn, yard, yarn for a long time because it's just so pretty. So this is the house gnome fingering, 75 merino, 25% um, nylon, and the colorway is Gotham Knights. So I saw this go up in the prize thread and I was like, Oh, I want that because Amanda is a huge, huge Batman freak. Super in love with Batman is my sister, which is great. She's going to get married to Batman and I get to ride in the Batmobile and hang out in the Batcave. That's a pretty sweet deal, right? So I'm going to make something for her using this yarn. Um, I don't know what yet because I'm going to let her decide what this should grow up to be. But it's really pretty. I don't think you can even see all the colors. So there's that kind of tealy color, orange, um, dark gray, not quite black. There's some brown in there. There's some purple, some natural parts of the skein. So it's just really, really really pretty. I was really excited that this was still available when it was my turn to pick because I was not the first person to pick. Not only did I get this from the person who donated it, she had the flu and she felt really bad that she took some time before she sent out her prize in the post, which I was like, you have the flu, whatever. It'll get here when it gets here. Um, I only go to the post office once every couple weeks because it's 
It's a really big hassle to take my kids to the post office. The post office here is really, really busy. So even if you get there first thing in the morning, you're probably in line behind a few people. So um, my price is not sent yet. I kind of feel bad because it was chosen mid-ish last week. But it'll get, it'll get out. I have plans to go tomorrow. Anyway, she felt bad, so she sent me mini skeins for my blanket. So after I go through the Haley yarn, these mini skeins are going into my blanket. And she labeled all of the mini skeins, which is really fun for me to know what the yarn is. I mean, it's not necessary. I know what all the yarn from my projects that goes in is, and some people have labeled their yarns when they send it to me, but it's it's not necessary. It's just kind of nice because when I find things that I like, I can be like, oh, I'm going to put that on my, my to get someday list. The second thing that I got, uh, spoiler alert, if you are in the 716 knit, 71, let's see, 716 knit <laughs> Daria Club, yes, and you haven't received your package, you should probably pause this and go check your mail because it should be there by now. But if you haven't gotten it, I'm going to show it really quick and uh, talk about it for a few minutes. So go away or not, whatever. This is the March colorway and it is a self-striping. That's what this HXC means. It is 716 sock which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and the colorway is. My entire shoe collection is based on the concept of dating guys three inches taller than me or more. Which if you watch Daria, you know that that's a quote from Quinn and it's Quinn, right? It's not one of the other fashion club members. Oh, now I'm, now I'm nervous that I'm miss saying this, but I'm pretty sure it's Quinn. Um, but this is based on the fashion club. And you remember those socks that I knit uh, two weeks ago? The ones that I gave to my sister in Michigan. Those are the original Mean Girls socks. So this is what they look like. They have cables on the front. Jenna always puts a stitch marker on her yarn. So this is the stitch marker for the yarn. It's a little tube of lipstick and the extra for the club is this ring with four, which represent the four members. I assume they represent the four members of the uh, fashion club. This is really, really, really bright and pastel-y, so I will probably use it for uh, my niece's Christmas socks because she's totally knit-worthy and she's totally worthy of indie dyed yarn because she loves what I knit her. Random side note, she has designed a cat sweater. I don't, I couldn't see the video really clearly of what she had drawn, but um, I don't know if it's a sweater for a cat or if it's a sweater for her that will make her look like a cat, but I do know <laughs> that what it needs is yarn and a zipper. My sister sent me this video earlier, the, the video of this earlier in the week, and um, awesome! So maybe there will be a cat sweater in my future? I don't know. I'll have to find out from my sister what that means. By the way, dog cuteness, this card came with my prize, so that was really exciting. I gave myself a book hangover, which you give yourself by instead of sleeping, you just stay up and read a book instead. And it kind of feels like an alcohol hangover from what I hear. I have never actually had an alcohol hangover, but it's the same sort of thing. You're sleepy, you kind of have a headache. Um, I stayed up all night and read The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I had read the first 30 pages, maybe. That could be a total lie. I had read it and um, I just hadn't it hadn't hooked me yet. I had read it one night before bed and I went to sleep like I'm supposed to. Um, but it hadn't hooked me yet. And then I went to bed and I started reading it. And I kept reading it. And from page 30 through page 315, 
310, whatever, I didn't put it down and read all night instead. This book is really, really good. It's about a girl who has cancer and um, she's been on treatment for a long time. She goes to a support group and meets a boy and it's basically their story. So she's really, really funny. By really funny, I mean hilarious. When I started the book, I put it down instead of reading all the way through the first time because um, my boyfriend and I don't usually go to bed at the same time because my kids wake up at between 5.30 and 6 and my boyfriend wakes up at about 9. So I go to sleep way earlier than he does, usually. That night he was tired, he came to bed at the same time I did, and I was laughing every few paragraphs, and I was keeping him awake, so I put the book down. But then the night that I read this all the way through, I just, um, I went to bed before he did, and then I ended up reading past when he came to bed. This book is hilarious and also extremely sad. Obviously, the subject matter is awful. It's really, really good. Highly recommend it. Um, apparently, it's being made into a movie, so I had to wait for it forever to come into the library. And then it came in, and my boyfriend didn't tell me, so I didn't go get it. So it went back into rotation. So I had to put it back on hold and wait for it to come in again, because I don't buy books until I know that they're good. So this is going on my to-buy to go on my shelf list. I have a lot of lists. I love lists. Definitely good. Um, very funny. I would recommend not finishing the book while you're sitting at work because there could be tears. There were tears for me. A lot of tears for me, but that could have been because I stayed up really, really late and I'm more susceptible to crying when I stay up really, really late. The other book that I'm reading is The Body Book by Cameron Diaz and Sandra Bark. I got it on a whim. It was a recommendation from somebody, I don't remember who, they were like, hey, read this. I actually like reading um, nutrition books every few months because sometimes I get lazy about taking care of myself. I really do. I'm like, hmm, all the junk food, all the Taco Bell in the world should belong to me. And that's great, but it doesn't, it, like, it tastes good, but it doesn't make me feel good. So I need to remind myself of how I should be taking care of myself. Um, I still eat Taco Bell, just, uh, I rein it in a little bit. And reading, reading nutrition books helps with that because I'm like, oh yeah, that would be a good idea. It's not, it's because um, junk food is easy and quick and I just forget that other types of food are also easy and quick and delicious. I don't know. It's a very conversational book which is kind of funny because when I read I hear um, the voice, of, the voice of the narrator for books that are conversational or novels, um, the voice of the narrator plays in my head. I hear it as a voice. I don't just process the words. So Cameron Diaz plays Princess Fiona in Shrek. So basically, Princess Fiona is um, telling me all of this information. It's very conversational. We sit there and drink our tea together in my head. It's pretty good. It seems like it's decently well researched. Obviously, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't recommend just making this your new body bible or anything, but it's pretty good. I'm enjoying it so far. I think I'm about halfway through my list this week. Uh, I have three podcasts to recommend. The first is The Giving Flower with Kimberly, which I actually started watching a really really long time ago right before we moved into the new place. Yeah, a really, really long time ago. And then we moved and I got a different computer when I set up my room. So my list of um, the podcasts to watch through was on my old computer and I just haven't 
plugged it in to get any of the files off of that computer. I actually loaned it to a friend. The, uh, the tower. I loaned my whole tower to a friend and I just haven't gotten that information yet. Whatever. So I, I watched that. I watched all the episodes. They're on the shorter side, which is nice. Uh, some of them are long, but they're they're mostly the shorter side of podcasting. And she usually records with one of her children, at least. Sometimes both make an appearance, so that's fun. The second podcast is Owl Knit With You with Rebecca. And I think that Rebecca and I would be friends, but we would be the kind of friends who only see each other like once a week because she is super super high energy. Think um, penguin soup energy, which is like, and blah, and blah, and, which is great. I find her really entertaining, but um, she would wear me out in person, I feel. But she's really fun to listen to, and she is holding a, um, a sock knit together sort of thing. Specifically for people who are pretty new to sock knitting, or um, not not necessarily new because she's been knitting socks for a while, but she hasn't. She's not a sock knitter. I think she, as of this podcast, she has knit four socks, five socks total in her life, and um, only one of them is a pair. That could be wrong, but it's she's she's new to it and she wants other people to start knitting socks too so that's that and the third one is brochet podcast with lucas and um if you couldn't tell he's a guy so if you're looking for guy podcasts i know that some people especially other guys are looking for guy podcasts and he was primarily a crocheter, and he is now learning how to knit. And so he's talking about that process of learning how to knit and how stockinette was great, but learning how to purl just, like, opened all of the options for him. He's like, oh, this is magic. So that's really fun. Uh, about that podcast, I would recommend if you're wearing earbuds, maybe skip episode two there's a sound issue that it causes a buzz and um, it's really bad at the beginning but it stays through the rest of the episode and it gave me a little bit of a headache. But the content, like him talking was nice, it was just that one sound issue. So if you have problems with sounds, maybe not that episode. And that's what I've got for you this week. I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string and I will see you next week. Bye!